A toddler in Michigan has been hospitalized after accidentally being served alcohol at an Applebee's restaurant. The parents of 15-month-old Dominic Wilson Jr. said they ordered apple juice for their son but were instead given a margarita mix. After discovering the mix-up, Wilson was rushed to the hospital where his blood alcohol content was measured at a .10 that is legally drunk. Doctors said if he had drank the whole cup, he would have died. Police have ruled the incident an accident. A Santa Clarita football team has kicked off their season. The team is dedicating their season to help families affected by children's cancer. Valley View's Myra Castaneda was there for their home opener last month. These are the Santa Clarita Skyhawks, a semi-pro football squad. This group of local Santa Clarita athletes are playing in honor of Michael Hofflin a young boy who passed away from brain cancer. They opened up their season at Canyon High School. The team and the Michael Hofflin Foundation have collaborated to raise awareness and money towards children's cancer. The foundation was established in 1994. It is the team's second season adopting the foundation. Fans came out to cheer on their team and players try to pump them up in a close game. Defense. Defense. But their sweat and even their rough play wasn't enough to get the victory. But the players knew the cause overshadowed the loss. We had a teammate named Selvin Kobos. He's one of our linemen. His brother died last season from cancer. So that's another reason why this next season we're playing with, with a passion, you know, with a cause to put it out there. All these guys, we've been playing ball a long time. It ain't really about football anymore. You know, it's about making a difference in kids' lives. I'm playing for my community. I'm um, playing for children who can't play, who wish they could be out on the field. Um, it's so important because, you know, I work with children on a day-to-day -day -day basis. And like I always say, children are our future. So I'm fighting for our future. Just like the players, the coaches are enthusiastic about joining the cause. But what the Michael Hoffman Foundation does is they actually take time out of their days and they will go pick up a child and take him to a chemo treatment. You have men showing up to practice and you have men showing up on this field. They pay money out of their own pocket to be on the team, so it costs them money. And then they practice three times a week to be on the team, so it costs them time with their family, time with their friends. In a time where the NFL organization is disputing over money, the Santa Clarita Skyhawks are playing the same game but raising money for children's cancer. You can support by coming out. Tickets are only $10 or you can donate at www.skyhawks.org. The donations are tax deductible. In Canning Country, I am Myra Castaneda for Valley View News. Here's the scoop. And now here's Erin Giddens with Entertainment News, the GLAAD Awards, Comedy Awards, and the flick that got the top spot this weekend. Glee. Modern Family and Project Runway were big winners at the 22nd Annual GLAAD Media Awards. Prizes for Outstanding Comedy and Reality Series were presented in Los Angeles last Sunday. Actor Sean Hayes presented entertainer Christian Chenoweth with the Vanguard Award. I Love You, Philip Morris was honored as an outstanding film and limited release. The GLAAD Media Awards honor media for accurate and inclusive representation of the lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender community. Celebrity Comics honored this year's funniest TV shows and the films at the first ever Comedy Awards. Highlights from the show included Jon Stewart and The Daily Show crew accepting the award for Best Late Night Comedy Series. They were then booted off the stage by Stephen Colbert and his crew for The Colbert Report. It was a stunt, of course. Eddie Murphy was honored with the Comedy Icon Award and David Letterman was given the Johnny Carson Award for Comedic Excellence. Oscar-winning director Sidney Lumet is dead. The legendary filmmaker is known for classics such as 12 Angry Men, Network, and The Wiz. He was nominated for 10 Academy Awards and walked away with a total of four Oscars. In 2005, Lumet received an honorary Oscar for a career focused on issues of social justice, race, and ethics. He died of lymphoma in his Manhattan apartment on April 9th at the age of 86. He is survived by his wife, four children, and nine grandchildren. R&B singer Toni Braxton is preparing for a new reality series that stars her and five of her sisters. The new series, called Braxton Family Values, comes just seven months after Braxton filed bankruptcy for the second time. 
The Grammy Award winner says the show will give her a chance to discuss her financial and health problems that have been making headlines. The singer has told her fans that she suffered from lupus. It looks as though it was the cameo that was never meant to be. Both Mel Gibson and Liam Neeson have been dropped from making a small appearance in the Hangover sequel. Neeson was called in to take part when Gibson was cut, but due to scheduling conflicts, Neeson won't be able to fill the part either, forcing director Nick Cassavetes to step in. He will be playing the role of a Bangkok tattoo artist in the movie scheduled to open in May. The movie Hop jumped over the competition to reach the number one spot at the box office. The kids' film has been at the top spot for two weeks in a row, which is the first time for any movie this year. Hop made $21.6 million over the weekend. The comedy Arthur came in second, and the action thriller Hannah followed close behind in third. At least Neeson's going to be saving money on Tylenol since there's no hangover for him. That's it for entertainment. Now back to you with more news. A pair of pooches are up for adoption in New Mexico, but these pups are anything but ordinary. One is a seeing eye dog for the other. This is Scarlett, a playful six-year-old chihuahua mix who was hard at work. Her full-time job, a seeing eye dog. While she may seem small for the job, her client isn't that much bigger. It's a blind six-year-old miniature pincher named Brett. They are being sold as a pair at Lucky Paws because he relies on her eyes to get around. Once Rhett hears Scarlett's bell, he knows where to go. If they were to be split up, Rhett would have to be trained with another seeing eye dog, which takes a lot of time and patience. Take one dog and you have to take both. Thank you for watching Valley View News. For Rosalind San Juan and Erin Giddens, I'm Dina Betancourt. And I'm Courtney Price. Have a good day.